Hello and welcome to the Matchbook Betting Exchange. Um, English Greyhound Derby podcast, would you believe? There's only two more after this one. We're down to the quarterfinals. The last 24, sadly, it's the last 23. Swords Rex has been pulled out of the Star Sports TRC English Greyhound Derby after what was a very lackluster display last week. It was clear something was amiss. And I'm joined as always by PL. We'll be discussing the likes of Swords Rex, but we'll also be discussing some of the dogs that are well and truly there and uh, it's safe to say pl that this derby is finely poised it's after coming you know we sort of frame it often as an ireland v england but it's now just getting down to the dogs and it's finely poised yeah it is um and and it's still kind of border on the field isn't it so there's i think um generally you get something that goes fairly fairly short at this stage but um no there's there's plenty of dogs with with chances of of claiming the blue ribbon without a doubt and um it, I've, I've found it thoroughly enthralling and it's um it's been a really really good derby really good derby we've got some real class dogs left so um and bitches by the way so yeah, yeah. so um one in particular we'll, we'll yes, get into exactly. that yeah. Uh, before we start, we'll get into the nitty gritty. Just once again, remember that uh, daily markets available with Matchbook Betting Exchange on all races um, in Greyhound Racing. And of course, um, being an exchange, you'll find the prices near the off are you know, sizable. It's well worth your while getting involved. Certainly uh, in the last minute or two before the race um, kicks off, the, the prices there are well much better than you will generally be getting with the the likes of the sps uh, certainly the industry sp and um with the fixed odds firms also of course a, a vibrant anti-post market there for the star sports trc english greyhound derby uh, a little bit more on that later on but pl let's get into it um eight wonderful uh, third round heats the other evening um we thought passing the line that uh pl's trumpet was going to be more than needed, more than needed. Plus, um, as it was, sort of a dampener on affairs. Yeah, King was. Memphis did everything right. But I must say, from the start, if, if it had flashed up 28.50, so be it. When it came up, you know, 28.77, I think it was, or 28.74, I went, okay, um, Balabola Ed, you know, he's not the greyhound he was. You were talking about a four to one the field. This time two years ago, he was a six to four favourite to win the derby going ahead into the quarterfinals. Yeah. I know because I was on a 33 to one. I was given another <laughs> week. I was going to unload a good chunk of it. Uh, I went a week too or I went, to, I left it a, a week too late. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he beat Balnaboul Ed far, uh, fair and square. But Did. I suppose Ed ran okay in defeat, but Swords Rex. It, it was clear from early. He just never lifted a leg down the back. So it was a real struggle. And and he shouldn't have even qualified. Only dogs were sort of running at the back of him. Yeah, I mean, I suppose that shows his, his kind of, his class and determination, really. It's, it's really sad that he's he's not in it. And as I say, yeah, I couldn't, a couple of people uh, uh, said that, yeah, I was right to, to go with King Memphis. But I think he did, he did all the good things at the start, didn't he? Because he broke well King Memphis and, and obviously saw Drex never. And you never know whether he, he kind of did something coming out of the boxes and generally gracilis muscles are, you know, from Trapsy. And so, yeah, you can't, you know, I, I, yeah, I no, didn't no, want to none see, of his usual sparkle was there. I he didn't want to see it that way. Ball, no, because yeah. I, I'm, a, I am actually a, a big fan. And I actually thought, I think mean, I mentioned this to you last week. I thought trap four in, in the, in the courses was a really good box room as well. So yeah, it is, it's a, it's a big shame. He's been a wonderful dog for them. If they, you know, if they choose to try and get him back, gracilis, I don't know how serious it is, but Gracilis muscle anyway is not. I would, I'd be, I'd say a million to one. I, I yeah, I'll, I'll would. Try. That's I'd say I'll try and get him right as rain. Announced that he's going to stud, and he's bred in the purple, Drupal Sydney. Exactly. His damn line is back to Pat Dalton's breed, and like he just he's brilliant he's CV as well, isn't he? That's he the thing, yeah, isn't absolutely. He's just been an incredible dog. You know, yeah. a, a phrase I've used so often to describe him is just imagine owning a dog like him. You know, he's exactly. he, he, just amazing. Um, but when it comes down to it, there was one winner. And it was King Memphis, and he is now clear favoured once again. He had been disputing favouritism prior to this with Daladi Da in the previous week. Obviously, he's been favoured for a long, long time, but he's now clear favoured. He was returned at five to four the other evening. After two strides, that five to four looked absolutely monstrously big. Yeah, it did. Yeah, um, and that's why I expected him to do. As I say, it's 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 hard to judge really, you know, with Sword Drex finishing lane that that uh, what. You know what the merit of it was, if you if if you see what I mean. But I just thought he would do that anyway. I think you were you were thinking that Swords Rex would would flash out in front of him. But I think it was a reasonable break from again. Banner Builder Red showed nice pace, but he kind of got intimidated as he as he rolled in a little bit towards the first bend by mm. Memphis just being there, and then he once he grabbed the lead, that that was that. And 
I know you mentioned about times, but I don't think anyone's really worrying about no. 2870s or 2850s, particularly um, when you look at it dog for dog. You know, you say Bannable Red isn't the dog he was, but he's still performing at a very, very high level and he's a really good yardstick, Ian. So it was it was a real good eye-catching performance from from King Memphis. And he, he, he actually is doing it on a consistent basis, to be fair to the dog. And once again, he's been handed a... A great draw. Yes. Like he had a couple yeah. of great draws in the early rounds. Obviously, that last week was a potential banana skin, but here we are. He's been really rewarded for that victory. And yeah, you know, I, I think I think his price also takes into account the fact that he really should be in the semi-finals. Looking at the draw, but we'll get to that. Um, we have to mention some of the other victories on the card, and and the one race that we do want to talk about is Crap de Chavu and the laddie da twenty-eight sixty-two from the bitch. She was brilliant. They both started so well, but she just has that more early zip. There's no question about it. Now, he's on the outside, or we know where he wants to be. He'd prefer to be on the inside, but um, he, he showed all sorts of pace again. They're on the same racing line around the last two bends, and that probably did cost the laddie that. He then has to check off off the, off the last bend out wide and probably lose that half length, as it was. You know, crafty you would 28.62. You're doing that sort of clock. Like you need to be doing 28.50 to pick her up nearly. So I thought it was a brilliant run by the winner, brilliant run by the second. I just hope they meet again in the final. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that it was it was a really good buckle, wasn't it? Because I think this is one of the things that you said about the Ladi Dar. You know, he he can break well and he broke well, but the fact that she was on his inside and just sort of took took the lead. I mean, she's absolutely flying. And I think I was going to touch on something. I think in the first pod we did, and I I didn't actually do it. She she trialed on some really bad ground. It was, I think it was a big downpour. And I think they made, originally they made the going minus a hundred to start with. Then he went, changed it to minus 80. I mean, it progressively went minus 60, minus, but it could have been, I think, I think that trial took just that little bit out of her being on the heavy ground, Ian, because when she ran in the first round, um, Groucho's Duke kind of yeah. matched it, didn't he? And, then she battled back, and, and Groucho's Duke is another dog that probably went in there half cooked, and he's improved. But I think she improved massively from first round to second round, and I think those two second the clocks I've got for her, she's just virtually unleadable to the third bend. Now you're right about Delardi Dart. He came there and he kind of thought, "Do I go in? Do I go out?" And I, I actually, th I've got Crafty Chavu wanting sort of lane three and a half, and I, I've got. Uh, in probably wanted the same, really, Delardi Dar. So mm. you're right; they go, they're kind of going for this for the same ground. But I don't, I don't think, I think it's proved as well that Delardi Dar is actually okay from from box four. I think he can still operate, and the fact that he can he can come out the boxes, maintain his pitch, and then unleash that devastating back straight pace, and then the the, the staying power as well. Um, I think you're right. I think he he, he looks good to get to the final. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I still have the belief that he's the fastest greyhound in training. But again, he, you know, that yard he's lacking into the opening corner is an issue. That's the thing. Um, yeah. Because, you know, likes a crafty Shivu, if she's in front of him, he's going to have to go around her. Get and around that's it. adding another sort of length or two lengths to his journey. Um, of the other Heat winners, well, we have to mention the other Kobe. I have to say it was it was heart and mouth stuff after three strides he 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 didn't come away racing and yes he does a 402 sectional but he flew into the opening corner took it up on the bend obviously clam brian here uh treaty should i say stays middle of wide so he had a lovely clear passage but he had to get there to get that passage and thereafter it was just brilliant 28 77 here's a dog who's i suppose fresh and well you know what i mean like don't get me wrong he's not he's not young but there's not mad mileage on him and yeah. the way he's running the way he's improving week on week i think he's a big big player yeah, I, I agree with you. And it's funny because I yesterday I went back, I was doing, because, I, you know, I do the lanes and stuff like that, and I've been doing some clock-ins as well. And I went back and watched the head-ons. And then I, I caught the I caught the the interview with with uh, Nikki Holland. And you've just mentioned it, and she just mentioned it. He didn't really flash. And I didn't really notice. So I just thought it was his natural early that took him to the front anyway. And you, what I think what you're saying and what Nikki is saying is that he can break much better than that, and that's what well, he wanted. Absolute, to like do. he's a lightning starter, you know, the I mean? lightning starter. Yeah, because I I've got the opinion that it's not a gimme that if that he clears Hawkfield Blue, and I, they've actually met twice now from two, I think boxes two and four, both occasions. And I know John's dog 
he came out running in the first round and he probably didn't quite break as well in the second and the third round against the other Kobe. So I, now they're drawn the other way. I was a bit, I actually said to Lorraine yesterday, I thought, well, what, what do you think? And she said, no, I think the other Kobe can break better than that. And, and then it, it'll blow in the, into the, into the turn. And, look, and I guess, I mean, I want that to happen obviously because we're on a big prices, but I've, st I've still got that little, little bit of, um, can he, can he break that full length clear? Because I am to think that, Hawkfield Blue is actually going to the bend all right himself, but whether he's, you know, it's, it's just you've still got to do it, you know, from that, from this draw. That That's what I'm trying to say, really. Glengar Martha still has the 390 section. I think the only dog left in the competition that can do a 390 is is the other Colby. Um, yeah. But again, we're going to have to see him. It's a different mechanism. He's not used to the boxes. Um, and it'll be interesting to see because he is a lightning starter at the best of times. So, yeah, it'd be very interesting to get um, into that. Uh, Drupi's Pivotal was a good winner. Churchfield Sid, good winner. Drupi's Donut um, and Groucho's Duke. Um, all, all, all of them basically led from the opening corner or, or before it. Um, you know, they're all there. You, you don't want them around you uh, because they're capable of going to a corner. Um, they all have a bit to find on the clock, but they're going the right way. Certainly Drewby's Pivotal and Groucho's Duke in particular are going the right way. Yeah, Groucho's Duke is a, is a dog that, that has really improved throughout the derby. And I know John was interviewed as well. And it, he, he said that, you know, he'd, he'd come in probably because he'd done the quick uh, trial in Limerick that compared well with some other good dogs. And he thought, why not? And it, it, it's really quite apparent, wasn't it, that, I mean, even Lorraine, oh, she, she pointed out to me, she said that I've, I'm sure that dog cramped on on the running in the first round. And he just looks yeah. like he's just, he's staying that bit better. But it, he's, he's still going to struggle, I think, especially from the draw he's got, is to get round those, you know, those crafty chavus and, and King Memphis and and the other Kobe's. He's still going to struggle to get round those, but he's he's certainly got that that potent weapon of, of early pace. And obviously, I suppose if he comes out like he did uh, in the third round last week, then then he's going to give himself some kind of a chance because of that that real brute early pace. He's probably in the heat with the most sort of. In exactly. depth strength, it's like there's not a bad greyhound in that. Like, no. obviously, we're the quarterfinals of a derby, there's no bad greyhounds anyway. But you know what I mean? There's there's no yeah. dog where you go, well, I put a pen to that. That's twenty yeah. to one. Like the mere yeah. fact that Drupy's pivotal is 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 disputing outsider for, of of the field with Groucho's Duke tells you how good a race it is. Um, yeah. No, uh, and Ballymac Slick, of course, is the one we, we haven't mentioned. He he came home very strongly. Um, He's just running well. He just seems to like the place. Let's look at the um, anti-post market. So King Memphis is in in there around. It's, it's general a seven to two sort of chance, but you can get a bit of fours around there. That's where he, he's around one hundred thirty at the moment with Matchbook. But I'm sure near the day there will be a few looking to take him on. Um, the other Kobe's in around the five to one mark. I think that's perfectly fair. Same could be said for the laddie da five to one, six to one. Um, you know that's. That that's that's a good enough price for me now. I must say, like for a dog, I think it'll be in the final. Crafty Chavu is the weird one. Like she's she's eight and ten to one, eight eight nine to one certainly, and um, she's nine to one on, on she's not she's nine point three on the exchange at the moment. Like, uh, uh, have I missing something? Should she not be a little bit higher in the betting? Should she not be nearly second favorite the way she's going? Uh, I totally agree with you. I think that's. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I, I really don't know why because I've my my clock can say that she, and she's doing it now. You know, she's done it. Second round, third round, she's doing it on, a, on what you could say a regular basis, but she just looks mm -hmm. like she's doing everything right. She's just settling in well. She's she's nine from nine at the track. She just loves the track. So it's it's yeah, I think it's cr a crazy price, really. Um, yeah, bitch and form, get, bitch and form, Derby really, winning yeah. handler, um, unbelievable early speed. Um, as you say, nine from nine around the place, and and it's not even that she's in form. She seems to be growing into the competition you know as we said a couple of weeks ago maybe last week that you know that time when queen joni got the better of her a couple of times she wasn't herself there's no question that wasn't the crafty shivu we 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 know and love like if you go back a month prior to that when she was running around hove she was absolutely like her clocks were sensational, sensational yeah. you know what i mean absolutely yeah. sensational this yeah. time last year she was improving at a rate of knots to the sporting press irish oak she went on to win the final that was her last race in ireland and here we are now a year later and just seems to be a little of a blind spot with people. I don't know. You know, it just seems a bit big for me. Boyle Sports, Bob, like if, like he's he's in around eight, ten to one. 
if you ask me which I'd sooner back to win a derby at this stage, it'd be Crafty Shivu every day of the week, twice yeah. on Sundays. Now, don't get yeah. me wrong, Boyle Sports Bob, what he's doing? Like, I don't even know how we qualified the other night. Never mind only be beaten like a length or length and a half or something like that. His pace from the third bend home was astounding, but he looked drunk around the opening two bends. It was like, God, what, what's happened to this dog? He just seemed to get lost and all of a sudden took off from halfway. It was an exceptional run, super fast Gordon. He checked off the opening corner. He just got the, the snout sort of cut off him. He came back in. He actually cost JT Etienne his place in the next round. Um, he ran well in, in, in defeat. We know he can go faster, as he proved in the previous round when setting the standard. Gay Time Nemo has really tiptoed into this competition. Yeah. He's absolutely flying. Just seems to he love is. the place. And then we get to Balnabola Ed, um, who, who, again, isn't the greyhound he once was, but is still running hard. And we got to remember, he's had so little racing that there still could be a, a room for a bit more improvement. Ballymac slip, Droopy's done and so on so on where are we at as regards the anti-post market you're no doubt happy with your book if you had to add one what would it be no well, i've you know i've had probably far too many bets really but i'm because of you i'm sitting pretty with the other kobe at a real fancy price i haven't actually got king memphis in the book and i was thinking of doing that because i actually think he'll get to the final and he won't be four to one in a, in, a, in any final um, but I think Crafty Shavu is the one that is at around the, as you said, the nine ten on on Matchbook Exchange. I think I think uh, that is the greyhound that's overpriced because I think she's got the lot. I mean, she might just be vulnerable slightly in the closing stage, but she's not. You know, she's not fading per se. But if if, if she's able likes, to contain the laddie up the home straight, exactly the likes of right, the yeah. likes of the laddie up. But if the laddie up had made it made his decision to go right the way around instead of in and then out, then he'd have beaten her. You know, he, he could have picked, he could have picked yeah. her up, but you know, as you say, one of them six and one of them's sort of nine, 10. So that, that's in, in my eyes. And and again, if you're in front and I think, um, as, as we, well, I think we all, we've all seen with their own two eyes, that crafty Shavu has got better early pace than Delardy Dar. So there could be a scenario, I suppose, when Delighted dies draw on the inside of her, I don't know. But at the moment, I, I see. I, I don't mind. But both of these greyhounds being drawn off the fence. I actually think they're better drawn off the fence. Um, yeah. I think Superfast Gordon's better drawn off the fence. So, so when we when we look at trap draws, and some, sometimes these these some of these dogs that get trap one, they just don't want trap one, and they spend a lot of their time going in a diagonal line and shoving into another dog on their outside. So you're not going to run your fastest time doing that. So in that respect, can you can say you know maybe both Shavu and and Delardida have been um, drawn drawn right in 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 the, in, the, in the last couple of rounds. So yeah, I I just think that Shavu is is overpriced at around about the nine stroke ten mark. Yeah. Yeah, and as we say, Crafty Shivu is, is overpriced. We we then talk about the opening quarter final where she has an absolute nightmare draw if she misses it. Um, like this, this is the type of contest where you probably don't want her. You probably want one or two of the slower dogs, stronger runners. But she's in a contest where all six of them are capable of going up fast. It, it's just a little bit tricky now. She'll want to be doing things right in the opening yards. But you, know, you look at her last three sections, you know, 408, 398, 393. You know, that doesn't suggest she's going to go back to a 408. If anything, you'd imagine she'll sort of repeat that sort of 393 or, or something close to it. And that should probably be good enough. But again, she's just surrounded by, you know, super fast Gordon, Gay Time Nemo, Drubby's Pivotal, Groucho's Duke, Churchfield Sid. It's a hell of a good contest. It's the opening quarter final. Uh, PL, you know, Crafty Shavu is around the six to four chance. And you know what? I think that's about the right mark because I don't think I'd like to be backing her any less than that. I don't think I'd like to be laying her at any more than that. I, I just think she's found her sort of just the right sort of position. Yeah. I mean, I, I priced the the quarterfinals up when I got in indoors from from uh, Saturday night from from Toaster when I got in. And I, I priced them all up. And I got to tell you, I think m most of my prices were very, very similar to to the way that the, the odds compilers have, have priced them up. Um, but I, I've had one bet. And it's Crafty Shavu at thirteen to eight because I'm, I made a shorter than that. Um, you, you got right in the, and I was the same as you when I looked at. It, I thought, wow, there's a lot of early pace. But then I've gone back, I've, I've watched videos, I've looked at the clocks, and I'm just. It's probably a bit like you last week with with Swords Rex. I'm just convinced this bitch will break down the middle. 
she'll lead and she'll win. And that, I just yeah. think it's that straightforward. And and I, I know I sh- it shouldn't be because you're right. It is a very, very good heat. But like you say as well, they're all going to be good heats. Um, but the thing is, is that when, if I believe that she's going to break down the middle from a box that she wants to be in, she's going to lead, who's back running her? That's what I think. I no, that, it's, it's it's not a race where you'd say, "Oh, well, if that's two lengths off for at the second bend," and that's going to be a no task chance. in itself. If she yeah. starts, they're going to like they're going to struggle to be two lengths behind her because even if she does go around in front, like super fast Gordon, he is he has that tendency just to edge off the opening corner a little bit. Mm. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, they have to get around him. Um, gay time Nemo is going to need to absolutely hammer out to clear super fast Gordon. Ruby's pivotal, you know, while he's running very well. You know, 415, 414, 412. That that doesn't really great in a race of this nature. Groucho's Duke, he has the 406, 407, 408. The one thing about him in Ireland was he is capable of flying start, but again, new mechanisms. He hasn't really done it. He's shown loads of early speed, don't get me wrong. And he's on the wrong side of her. So he's yeah, going to have to go is. up a length faster than nearly to get around her. Uh, and then Churchfield Sid, who we do know has a, a, a sub four second run in him every day of the week. Um, this fellow can go up strongly, but again, He's a wide seed. He's going to leave her room to, to maneuver. It's very hard to oppose her. Um, as I said, just you're basically betting six to four. She starts, and exactly, yeah. that's that's fair enough. You know, that, that really is fair enough. It, it's just one of those races where if something did take a flash start, maybe one of these two inside runners, all of a sudden you're just going, ooh, you know, ooh, and that, and if let's say Superfast yeah. Gordon was up or inside in the opening corner, um, you know, he's not a giant or anything like it, but you know, he does like a little bit of space. I wouldn't be surprised if he threw a shoulder either. You know, that sort of way. So it could get interesting. But I think the 13 to 8 year, you're after nibbling away at Crafty Shoe is, is perfectly fair. She could well be that to exchanges. Who knows? The flood of money could come for her. She could be even money 11 to 10 on the night. Yeah. And that wouldn't yeah. surprise me either. For me, it's a race where I'll be probably just watching on. Um, uh, super fast Gordon, I, I would have maybe considered, but I'd want bigger than 11 to 4. I'd want bigger than 7 to 2, to be honest. A bit of 4 to 1 probably would do me. Uh, and if he was 4 to 1 on the exchange on the night, again, a little nibble, but yeah, purely that's all it is. Um, so, you, listen, you, you've you've nailed your colours to the mast. Crafty as you view. I'll be with you. I think she'll win. For me, 6 to 4 is just about right. Um, my, my original take was I thought that Groucho Duke was was big at twelve, and I, I do make him shorter than than twelve. But I'm str- I'm I'm struggling to see how he gets a run because he's going to move into lane three, and I think Pivotal wants she, that. Probably, I don't know why they took the middle off. I really don't because yeah, um, he'll be going probably four and a half. I think Super Fast Gordon he wants to be going. He last last week he, he moved off and he was nudging into the two dog, and he could easily do the same with K Time Nemo here. And I just think it it leaves that. Clear passage. She'll, she 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 actually just edges off slightly, Shabu, from three. So she'll have a really good lane to drive down. As you say, she just needs to start. But if she just does what she she's done in the last two rounds, and surely you've got to base your bets on that, she'll just lead. And and then, you know, bookmakers want her to miss a break. I get that. And then Super Vice Gordon might be moving off. But he might also still hit uh, Gay Time Nemo, and they might... Um, do each other. Groucho's Duke and Pivotal could, could clash as well. It's just one of those where I, ju- I just believe that she, if she gets the, her normal start, as uh, she's been doing in the previous two rounds, because I said it, I think you can put a line through the first round. Yeah. That, that was my theory. And she's going the right way. I just think she'll lead and win. And, and Churchill said he, he will stay straight to the win line and then he starts to edge in as well. So then they could squeeze up a little bit in behind. And then, you know, as I say, I, I don't think uh, there's not too many strong running dogs in the race. Probably Gay Time Nemo would be the one I wouldn't want turning a length or a length and a half behind because it might be a race then. Yeah. Because I think it's yeah, really I, well. I, I, I dare say she's reminding me a bit of Susie Sapphire through her Irish Derby run where there was a night or two I posed her and just every night, bing, bing, yeah. bing, bingo. And it looks so obvious in hindsight. Like I, I think I posed her in the final. And, and bang, like passing me in the commentary box, she's three clear, you know, on the line, on the run to the corner. And, and that could be a similar scenario with Crafty Shivu, such as the form she's showing, such as the early speed she's showing. She really is a class act, you know, absolute class act. She's just, just the most, just the most likable bitch. Uh, moving on, second semi-final, and a certain King Memphis has been drawn in trap one again. 
Um, yeah. you know, if if you could pick a couple to have on his outside, there'd be Bally Mac Gizmo and Why I Man. <laughs> um, if he starts within a length. He's going around in front here. Bally McFinn is the one dog that can go up well, but he walked out the other evening. He actually ran well to qualify in second. Yeah. Ten to one does seem a bit of an insult, but I suppose when King Memphis is taking so much of the percentage out of the market, you sort of have to go that sort of price. Balabola Ed is five to one. And then it's just fancy prices. Gizmo, YI Man, and Hawkfield Abbey is the rank outsider of the field. We won't spend too long at his PL. I think we're both expecting King Memphis to trap on terms, if not in front, and just another sort of straightforward success i think so i think you know he, he just moves up into sort of lane two but gizmo will be two two and a quarter something like that i don't think why i man will be two and a half something like that but the builder red went to the bend with him and couldn't quite clear him so you you just think that really he'll just use his inside draw to good effect i agree with you about bunny mcfinn and i actually think that four's not a terrible draw here for him Mm -hmm. Portfield Abbey shouldn't really worry him too much. She's she's going to kind of flop in behind him. I would have thought she's done really well to keep qualifying. To be fair, she she's actually going to give Ed a really good draw. So if if for instance Memphis did miss his break, then I suppose Barry Bull or Ed could take advantage. Yeah, I, I think you know they're the three runners, aren't they? Um, Memphis, Finn, and Ed probably. That's the one where you're looking for the potential sort of pace angle. Um, I, I'll, I, 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 I love the place market. I must say, I do love the place market. It's like that little sort of hidden gem you sort of slip to when you can't find a, an angle in a race. You sometimes move to this place market. That's me. Um, I'll, I'll keep an eye on Bally Mac Gizmo in the place market. Just if King Memphis leaves a nice passage up the inside, yeah. Gizmo. You know, the key to his race is leading YI Man. If he does lead YI Man. All of a sudden, Finn and Ed just could be a touch vulnerable with, you know, just you know, Ed will will edge in at and parts and Gizmo just could. I just think he's a dog that's learning on the on the on the job. And um, in Ireland, he sort of you could tell there was a huge huge engine there. He just hasn't really had that opportunity to get loose and really roar. And I think there's a run in him. I just in yeah. the place market, I just keep an eye on Bally Mac Gizmo. Um, on to Heat three and here. Um, it's obviously a, a five dog affair now. So as Rex is missing from trap four, that, that's a great advantage. You, you'd imagine to, well, certainly a couple of them on the outside, Ballymac Slick and, and Droopy's Donut, although so as Rex probably wasn't going to be worrying them, you know, given his early speed and, and where he would have gone to. But I, I suppose it's a big help for the other Kobe in trap three. Um, we've spoken already about this. You, you're a touch worried about Hawkfield Blue. I have a feeling the other Kobe should clear him. He's not like he was back in the day where he, he would have dived straight in. He he tends to wait for the the room yeah. now. They do do that, you know. They do with with um with time and, and experience. Like this fellow is a confirmed veteran now. He's in April 20, so he's well into his fifth year now at this stage. Like he is actually you know, a full sort of three months younger than, or older, should I say, than Swords Rex. But but yet, doesn't seem it. He, he, he looks as sprightly as ever. He's had a couple of breaks in his career. He, he's been relatively lightly raced. And yeah, I just love the way he's doing it at the moment. And, and I'll be firmly with the other Kobe. I won't be backing him at four to nine, but... You know, I'll be I'll be flying my flag and hoping that he's still there next week for our yeah, our hundred one small small each way money. Yeah, me too. Um, the other thing to say as well is I've got I've got Bally Maxlick moving off start. I've got him doing it time and time again. I think he he could have done with a wide on him really, but it wouldn't have really mattered particularly if uh, the way they're drawn here, I guess. But uh, Droop is donut and Bally Maxlick could conceivably sort of ruin each other really. Um, yeah. I don't want to see that. Don't get me wrong, but I know that Bally Max League is moving off start. He's doing it time and time again. It from five, and he did it from four in the first round. So um, there's no real angle here, is it? It's just a no. I don't reason. think there is. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I actually think that Courtfield Blue could turn second here. I yeah, actually do I, think I, that he's running well. Um, he is. certainly. I, I I've spoken to Jamie Mig about this dog numerous times, and they really do think the world of him. Um, and he did a 28-10 run around Sheldon Park a while back. Yeah. And it was it was clear he was doing it. Like, he's an exceptionally fast dog. But, again, he just needs to be at his very sharpest in the early yards because the other Kobe, while he won't cut inward straight away, if he gets the room, he will. And then all he of a sudden, will, yeah. if yeah. a dog's going out, going in front of you and moving in, Hawkfield Blue might just be looking maybe to switch to the right. And that just might leave him a little bit vulnerable. But um, just a little story here. Ballymac Slick ran the night of the Greyhound Awards down in Limerick. And he was running in Shelburne Park on the same night in an A2 
600 yard contest in Shelburne Park from trap six, perfectly housed, perfect trip, everything. I managed to get a, a decent enough price, like odds against, shall we say, for Liam Dowling. He got beaten. How do you get him beaten in A2 with 600 yards in Shelburne Park? Kaya Nice Kate beat him. She went oh. on to be runner up in the Shelburne yeah. 600. So he ran into one. He was unlucky. Bitch, yeah, he came yeah. to England as a vet, as a maiden. He had 12, 12 races, no wins. He's after winning two of his three rounds today. He's just absolutely flying. He's a very, very fast greyhound. Obviously, he's staying well, isn't he? out of Ballymac Merkel, like he's a half sister to or half brother to the likes of Ballymac Taylor, Ballymac Katie, Garfini Blaze, and, and others, Haka Carlo. So, yeah, lots of stamina there. I, I think he'll make the frame. Uh, I think he'll be in the semi-finals, just given his power from from the third bend home. Uh, moving on to the last of the four quarterfinals, and uh, another hot favourite here, Deladi Dad, four to six. I, I am. I think it's safe to say, PL, I'm his biggest fan. Would I be backing him at four to six? Not in your life, but I want him to be there. I, I hope he gets through. I hope he wins well. Um, for me, it's hard to get past the four thirty six of Boys Sports Bob, and how how lost he seemed to be to the second bend but like he's after doing some unmerciful running from the third bend home in his last two starts um i i i think the laddie that will win us but if i was going to oppose him it would be with ball sports bob see i just can't i can't see how ball sports bob can be behind the laddie and back running we just can't see it no i can't i can't, can't see yeah. that let's not yeah. say he can't qualify but he's, he's now where he's been catching the eye and running against you know he 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 got beat short ahead by Edwards, didn't he? And and you know that probably isn't Derby winning form, really, is it? That's that's yeah. the thing. But I, I'm I'm pretty sure that he he'll qualify uh, here. Um, it's going to be interesting, really, what Bocco's Thunder is going to do from two because he's another one that really should have been middle. He's he's um, even even in Ireland he used to edge off um, from yeah. from sort of that inside to three sort of three stroke four. Um, yeah, that he is the only real concern I, I have for the laddie dad because you'd yeah, expect that's him to be cost concern, Tokyo. Yeah. Julio Gold will stay straight enough. I think if the laddie dad does a 394, he'll probably turn in front. Like, there's no crafty Shavu going up his inside here. Julio Gold no. is potentially the most likely pace setter of the remainder. But if the laddie dad does a 394, this could be this could be a 2850 run or better. You know, this yeah, this, this could be a track record breaking run, but he's going to have to do that 394. And if he does, all of a sudden. You know, gets a kind draw in the semi-finals. That five to one might just look generous, but again, you're you're dependent on a good start and you're dependent on a good draw next week. So that's up to yourselves. If you're not on at the bigger prices, maybe sit in your hands. Um, what is there an angle for you, PL? I suppose one of them is, is that Coolio Gold really showed nice early pace last week and was picked up by you know, Bally Max Dick, as you just mentioned, that uh, that can qualify in the previous quarter. Um, I've got Coolio Gold moving off start, um, just stepping to the right at, at trap rise, and I think we'll edge off. But it's going to have the, a, an ocean of space because Bocco's Thunder from trap two in the second round we've moved into almost like lane three and a half. <clears throat> yeah, and when he when he was in three last week, he actually he just he was fairly straight wasn't he but he got chopped off by churchville sid as i said to you churchville sid from from line into into first bend comes across and it kind of chopped his nose and he had to he had to check off himself it, that wasn't necessarily his fault but he was kind of off running in snatches a little bit uh Bocco's thunder um he's got a lot of ability and he's one of those where i can't i just can't work out in how much early pace he's got but I actually thought he showed fairly nice early pace against a really good early pace dog in Churchill Sid. Yeah. That makes sense. So uh, I'm just wondering whether he actually could give Delardi Dar something to think about going in that run into the first bend because you know he's going to be edging off. I think Coolio Gold is the most likely leader in this in this race because Cost Tokyo is a staying dog. BT Sparkle, she's a staying. A uh, young lady and and ball sports Bobby's a stayer. So there's not there's not in an enormous amount of early pace. So I th- I expect going into the first bend, it's going to be one, two, and four. And it's just really can Delardi Dog get his pitch and, and not get a touch from from Bocco's Thunder. That's going to be the key to Delardi Dog's chance. And again, it, it's one of those where when I looked at it, I thought, cool, he's got a, a great chance here. And I made him I made him one to two. 
And so four to six, you know, I, I don't really want to back him at four to six. So well, I'm the same what, as you. What, that's what I was going to ask you. What price would you back him at? Probably eight to eleven, four, four or five. Then yeah, but yeah. with no with no great conviction because I'm just I'm just I've just got that little bit of a worry about the line that Bocco Thunder is going to take. I mean, and look, the traps could go open, and if he did what he did last week, I fancy he probably leaves Bocco Thunder anyway from yeah. from from the from the start because he's you know obviously he was against um, Crafty Chavu, but it's just. Um, it's just that little bit of a worry, and I'm desperate for him. I'm the same as you. I, I want him to be in a derby final because I think he's such a class act. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd be greedy. I'd love a bit of evens now, must be said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, that, I don't yeah. think he's going to drift enough to go evens. Uh, to no. be honest, nah, let's go balls out here. I think I think he's going to flash out and do the track record. All right. There we are now. I'll, I'll, I'll polish up my trumpet. Um, hopefully, hopefully he's a bit of okay. Do you know why? I won't be too greedy. Hopefully, he's a bit of 10 to 11, four to five. Okay, yeah, four yeah. to five, right? We'll have five. a nibble at four to five. Yeah. Um, it's you know, it, it's really bubbling over. Lovely. Do you know, do you know what you notice? Like, yes, there are a few short priced favorites through it, but that means that they're kept apart. It means that. They all should progress the next week. And all of a yeah. sudden, you know, you keep two apart and two apart. And all of a sudden, it just, oh, it's just setting up lovely for June 29th. Uh, Billy Brennan speaking on the on one of the WhatsApp groups yesterday, telling us that, you know, all the, the boxes are booked out in semi-final night. Never mind the final night. It's yeah. coming to a head. People are really getting behind this derby. It's really yeah. exciting. It should be a wonderful, wonderful occasion on June 29th for the final of the Star Sports and TRC English Greyhound Derby. As we speak. PL, it's twelve to Ireland, eleven to the UK. Have you have you have you run a pen through it? Have you decided how many are going to be there in the in the semis? I, I'd love a bit of an eight four split now. I have to be said, but uh, I don't know whether I'll get it or not. But you'd expect maybe the laddie Dan Boyle Sports Bob to 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 progress. I think the other Colby will be there with another one of the Irish um, behind King Memphis. I, you know, it, it's it's odds on the least. Well, it's 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 well it's in it's inevitable to be another Irish two there because there's so many of them. But you know, it's odds on probably the two of them will make it through from that heat. So that's six all of a sudden, and then we're looking at like Superfast Gordon, Gate Time Nemo, a Groucho's Duke. You know, if one of them could sneak in, could be seven five maybe, maybe eight four. Eight four would do me lovely. What about yourself, PL? No, I don't not really look at that sort of thing. I just look at uh, the the um. You know me, Ian. I'm, most of my anti post bets are all. Are all Irish trained anyway. I've that doesn't really concern me particularly, other than you know, when I see a fast dog, I just get excited, and I've really got excited this year. I, th I think it's such a deep, deep competition, and uh, yeah, may the best dog win. <laughs> Yeah, made the best. As long as I've have you have you looked track. have you looked ahead to the to the weather? How how we fix this on Saturday evening? Yeah, no, I, I think it, we've got kind of mi mixed weather, isn't it? And it's been it's been sort of sunny even in one day. It's been sunny, rainy, sunny, rainy. So I don't think we've got desperate weather. But it'd be nice that, if the sun. That, that'd be out. perfect. That'd be perfect yeah. for track conditions. You know, it because would, yeah. you know we can say all you like about Bowser, but you can't beat a bit of a bit of rain. Exactly, hundred yeah. percent. No, that's great. Listen, we have four wonderful quarterfinals to look forward to in the Star Sports TRC English Greyhound Derby. We have to give our few pointers there. PL, from a punting point of view, what 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 are you looking at now on Saturday night? Yeah, I'm just I'm Chavu, really. I am Chavu. I think King Memphis will win, but he's probably too short for for me to get involved with. Um, delighted, I'll probably win, but again, too short. And the other Kobe has just got that slight worry. I'm, I'd rather just see him in the final. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, you'd love to see him at six to four in the final. You could do a bit of business then, can't you? Yeah, um, yeah, looking, looking through them, um, I've mentioned it already. I, I'll be keeping a little eye on the place market. Um, Super fast Gordon, probably not at, at his price now. He'd be too short, I'd say, in the place market. Bally Mac Gizmo does interest me in the place market. I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on that. Um, and Bally Mac Slick, maybe, just all to keep an eye on him in the place market. As for the last heat, well, it's just a case of fingers crossed. Uh, reverse forecast, the lady down, Boyle Sports, Bob. Um, but no, Great four quarterfinals to look forward to, and best of luck to all who are still there with the with the selection, with a, a a part ownership or any ownership, or for any trainers watching on. Best of luck, um, a great derby, and uh, well done to all involved. It's gone off without a hitch. Touchwood PL, may that continue. Uh, don't forget. 
Um, we are part of the uh, Matchbook Insights, the podcast range. And at present, there's a, a wonderful um, Euro 2024 podcast out, uh, hosted by our own Daniel Hussey, of course, uh, the likes of Mark and 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 uh, Miguel Delaney are there. Um, uh, it's a it's a good it's a good listen has to be said. Uh, plenty of football coming up. PL. It's uh, it's strange that the derby takes it on. Normally the derby tries to avoid the football. Not this year. Meeting it head on. They're obviously not yeah. expecting England to go far. Um, <laughs> obviously in Ireland here we're shouting for the Scots and the Spanish and the Italians and the Portuguese. And uh, we'll keep an eye out for the English also. But uh, no, lots to look forward to in terms of the football. Yeah, there is. Uh, I must admit, I, 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 me, I'm worried about the the manager more than the team really, but. Um, yeah, I hope they go deep. Um, I think probably France will take the world a beating, but um, yeah, it's, it, again, looks a, looks a decent competition. But all my, my eyes will be firmly focused on uh, on the derby. Yeah, indeed. Like and subscribe all the um, podcast channels, uh, be it on YouTube or indeed any one of your podcast providers. Uh, there's also a US Open uh, golf uh, podcast available at present. Well worth yeah. a listen. Um, it's a competitive field. I'll be keeping an eye of, of course, on the Irish lads, uh, Rory and, and Shane Lowry in particular. Um, but this fellow, Scotty Scheffler, I think he's a future in the game. What do you think, P.O.? <laughs> I think he might. He's he's just absolutely tearing it up, isn't he? It's incredible. Oh, it's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Incredible. And if you saw him, if you saw him actually, if you saw him with that swing on the driving range, you'd offer you'd offer you a bit of advice, wouldn't you? Um, currently four point five in the exchange. I've been told by Daniel uh, Nap of the Year. Yeah, Scotty Scheffler. He's not bad at the golf. Do you know what? Crafty Chavu, uh, the other Kobe, and Scotty Scheffler. There's a little travel for you, PL. Uh, that'll pay for uh, that'll pay for the expenses. Pay for the the, the diesel up to a toaster this weekend. That's, That's it, it though from us on this um, Wednesday afternoon. Best of luck with your punting in the weekend ahead. A great Star Sports TRC English Grand Derby. We can't wait to talk about the semi-finals a week from now. <laughs>